coming off a questionable week one win. At least that's how I'm describing it. The Ravens host the Dolphins coming off a commanding week one win. The Ravens are three and a half point favorites, though, Kyle, at home. And we'll start with them. Who they, they got the W, uh, but they continue to have massive questions in their receiver core. And just what is the state of the Rashad Bateman hype train right now? Is there anyone other than like Mark Andrews or uh, Rashad Bateman we can even consider worth rostering? Just kind of, should, I, don't, I don't know. Should we be impressed by the Ravens last week? Should we be deeply alarmed by Rashad Bateman? I just don't know what to think about this team after one week. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of uh, of like the Traylon Burks situation where like Burks was out there, he made some moves, but he's not a full time player, and that's frankly what we saw with Bateman. Unfortunately, he had to pay more to get Bateman this summer, which is a bit frustrating. And he did get uh, it was like a fifty yard touchdown reception on a Jets defense that was the worst, or for opponents, they were the best at allowing long receptions to opponents. So if there was a week where he was going to pile up all of his yards on one bad defense, it was obviously going to be week one. So I think just the overall fact that Devin Duvernay was out there getting more targets and running more routes than him is, is frustrating. And maybe Bateman, you know, this is really the first time he's been able to be up and ready for week one. Maybe that plays a role in him getting on the field more as we get deeper into the season. But right now he is more like that three, four sort of speculative play. I mean, Jackson's got a good arm. Bateman's out there often, not all the time. But it's I, I don't feel as good as I did going into week one. Any Rashad Bateman counter arguments yeah. there? Well, I just want to push back on like him versus Burks. I mean, Burks was down in like the 30s in terms of his route participation, and Bateman was at 74%, which isn't ideal. Like, you know, he's number one wide receiver. We would like him to be at like 90%, but you know, it's a different, it's sort of a different thing. At that level, he can still kind of get in the end zone and save his day, which is what he did. Um, he had 2.36 yards per outrun. So he actually, I think it's like one of those things where if this was kind of a weird game plan thing um, and, you know, they were up pretty big on the jets by the middle of the third quarter, maybe as one know, does, he, he gets, he gets a few more routes in this game and all of a sudden he's exactly what we were thinking. I, I'm not buying the Duvernay stuff. He was only about no. 53% of routes. They, uh, the Ravens schemed their first play to Bateman uh, kind of having him run across the formation and get open he was tackled right away. It wasn't you know, anything close <laughs> to a, a big play. But then, but then, you know, so I'm thinking, oh man, like they, they really want to get this guy involved. And that was it, like for a long time. And then there was the downfield shot. Um, and you know, you can't you you can't take that away. You got to give it to him. Uh, but I, I do I do think he's gonna be frustrating for fantasy. Devin Duvernay, that was one of the like easily most easily yeah. scrolled by a box scores. Yeah, ever seen. yeah, whatever. Just, yeah, just, I know. I got a lot it'll of. It'll happen every now and then. Yeah. Yeah. Just part of life. Yeah, with the waiver chat, people were like, "Why? Why not? Why am I not adding Duvernay? He scored twice, didn't you see?" I said, "Well, he ran a route on half the dropbacks." Yep. So can't wait for the Titans to beat the Bills this week, and for Devin Duvernay to score two touchdowns. Oh, well. It's going to be. What can you do? Crane looks like J.K. Dobbins is going to make his 2020, 2022 debut after what seemed like a disconnect all summer between him and the coaching staff about his health. Maybe it was cleared up by the fact that Kenyon Drake and Mike Davis and Justice Hill were not the answer against the New York Jets. And so it looks like J.K. is going to play. What should our expectations be? Yeah, that's that's uh, kind of how I'm seeing it, is that he's, he's going to get some run because – Kenyon Drake was pretty bad. Um, he was he was the fifth worst in NFL Next Gen's uh, rush yards over attempt, um, rush yards over expected per attempt. I mean, I, I don't know. I, it's tough to say you can like really play Dobbins. I wouldn't play him basically in any format, but we should see him. <laughs> sure, I wouldn't run. play him in literally any league. I'm in. I, I, I wouldn't. I mean, you don't know. You just don't know like what what his uh, involvement is going to be, but. The hope is he he gets out there. He gets out there for enough snaps that we can actually get a sense of how healthy he is, and he looks pretty good. And then we roll with him in week three. I think you're kind. Of, it's kind of a wait and see week with Dobbins, but you know, luckily no one else has stepped in and and shown anything. Um, and certainly Mike Davis isn't it. So yeah, I think that the runway's clear here if he's healthy. I do I think as someone who drafted a. A lot of bad running backs this summer. Because as one does, you know, if you listen to the show a lot, you know that's oftentimes the strategy we employ. Let's punish our opponents with receivers and take some suspect running backs. Jacob Dobbins can be in some starting lineups for me. And it's definitely a, a gamble. And it's a gamble like I lost with Chris Godwin last week, right? I was like, Godwin is playing on one of the best offenses. 
we're playing him, right? He goes out, and I don't know if it was like a um, compensation type of injury or whatnot, but obviously it didn't pan out for me. I'm going to take that gamble again with J.K. Dobbins this week, and it's because exactly what Crane said, that the Drake was so poor, and we saw them actually have a positive pass rate over expectation, but I think it's specifically because they were starting Drake and playing Mike Davis behind him. You know, when they have their team, at, you know, I don't know if it's perfectly healthy, but when they have their team at optimal health, they want to be this run first and extremely efficient running attack. So I'll be gambling with Dobbins, but it's like, it's, it's a very thin gamble. It's just a gamble that I'm, I'm willing to take because he's incredibly talented. I do think you can kind of jam him in there as a top 36 running back because it was a pretty not great week one for running backs. Still like a lot of really unsorted situations. I, I do think you can maybe count like 12 to 15 carry upside there for JK. And that's probably on the outer limits of what his, his oh. carry count will be as he comes back. But Denny, on the other side of the ball, do we expect Tyreek Hill to dominate targets to the degree that he did over Jalen Waddle? I mean, 12 targets yeah. in your debut against the Bill Belichick defense. It's kind of like as clear as a commitment gets. Jalen Waddle did get the big play. He did get the touchdown, though. Just should we believe our eyes with the Dolphins' week one usage, basically? Yeah, I mean, I, I believe uh, my priors. I believe, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> my uh, preconceived notions. And, and I believe what we saw uh, in the numbers, you know, from last week, Terry saw a bunch of manufactured touches, which is a little bit new. I mean, they did that in KC a little bit once they took away the deep ball last year. But uh, Tyreek Hill had 19 expected fantasy points. Waddle had nine expected fantasy points. Um, obviously, he had more. Waddle ended up with more because of that touchdown on fourth down. Um, Tyreek had a 42% target share. Waddle had a 17% target share. Uh, Tyreek Hill accounted for 40% of the team's air yards, one of the highest marks of the week. So I think I think it is pretty clear that the Dolphins are adamant about getting the ball to Tyreek Hill. Kyle in the Dolphins' backfield, we saw, I think, mostly what we expected there. Pretty clear Chase Edmonds' commitment, Raheem Mostert involved. Any surprises in the data, or what, what are we seeing? No, I mean, it was good to see Chase Edmonds, if you had Chase Edmonds, out, out targeting uh, Raheem Mostert 4-1, to one, out carries him 12-5. to five. Maybe the only cause for concern is that Miami only had three red zone carries. They were the highest pass rate over expectation teams. They were passing at all parts of the field at all times. They only had three red zone carries, small sample. But two of them were Tua, and one of them was Mostert. That is no, no red zone carries for Edmonds, and that's kind of been his MO throughout his career. But it's a small sample. I wouldn't get too worked up over it. Maybe the more concerning thing is we saw some Mostert on the two-minute drill. It only converted to one target. But it's a committee that still favors Edmonds pretty strongly. I think you can rely on him as an RB2, especially because, like you said, like there are a lot of sort of unsettled situations. This feels about as settled as we expected seeing that final you know, preseason strong Chase Edmonds showing. So I think this was a pretty good run out for him other than maybe just the overall lack of rushing volume on the team side. Man, coaches will let Chase Evans date their daughter, but they will not let him touch the ball <laughs> inside the 20 yard line. It's just, uh, it's really, really quite something. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC sports and rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the, you know, autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.